So we're going to move on to the next caller. He just called. It's Larry Payne. The reason why I've invited him on the show is I believe that yoga as a form of therapy definitely has its place here in um, the Western world, you know, in the United States, because a lot of us don't have medical insurance. I know there's Obamacare and everything, but there's still, still people who don't have insurance for whatever reason. Either they can't afford the premiums or they just don't believe in going to doctors, whatever the reason is. And so one of the ways of treating your body, healing your body, is through yoga. It has many, 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 many paths, many, many limbs, as, uh, yo- uh, as Arvind was talking about. There's the asana for the body. There's Ayurveda for what you eat and what you ha- what you. Uh, um, what you put into your body. There's yoga to de-stress, the meditation. So, you know, yoga has its function. So we're going to be talking with Larry about yoga therapy. So let's bring him on the phone right now. Oh, Larry, welcome to the show. Hi, Joni. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm so happy to be You know, you are one busy person. I know that <laughs> you, you, uh, you have started everything, and you have your hand in everything, and I think you just had a yoga therapy conference just, was it last week? Yeah, we had the 25-year anniversary of um, the International Association of Yoga Therapists, which Richard Miller and I started 25 years ago in a little uh, in Madras when we were studying with Deskatar. And here we are today. It has like 6,000 members. They're in 50 countries, 50 states. The president is an MD uh, who works at NASA <laughs> at the Pentagon. And our research director is a Harvard professor. It's, it's come a long way and so, so uh, 25 years of yoga therapy, yeah. and some people are just finding out about yoga therapy now. D- define yoga therapy. What exactly does it mean? Well, if you go to <clears throat> iayt.org, mm-hmm. that's the uh, website for Yoga Therapy Association, you'll find about five pages of everybody's view of what it is. And there's no city, state, or federal guideline on what even yoga is let alone yoga therapy, so it's all based on opinion. So I think that um, as one of the founding fathers of yoga therapy in America, I, I have an opinion. And basically, to make it really simple, yoga therapy is for people who for some reason don't fit in a group class. These reasons could be physical, it could be emotional, spiritual, any of those things, but they need one-on-one attention. And that was sort of born in India um, by a couple places, one called Kai Vuladama, uh, another one uh, called the Yoga Institute of Santa Cruz, and also um, with Krishnamacharya back in the 30s. Um, so, you know, the different groups of people use different tools. Uh, traditionally in India, uh, it was always yoga and Ayurveda together with medicine. Mm-hmm. And um, the program I have at Loyola Marymount, Yoga Therapy Rx, is uh, yoga meets modern medicine. Because I want these people to get a job, you know, when they finish their course. And so they need to be able to talk to the doctors. There's something called SOAP notes, S-O-A-P, and the whole industry talks Mm -hmm. through those notes. And very few yoga therapy courses, you know, offer that. So... um, Again, my particular definition is that these are yoga therapies for people who, who for whatever reason, don't fit in the group class. And then there's another category now called focus group. <clears throat> That's a group of people who have had one-on-one instruction, not quite ready to go back into the mainstream. And so you have like a low back class or you have a MS class or you have a Parkinson's class. Uh, so that's another kind of new thing called focus groups. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the thing that gets me is that, you know, yoga can be used for therapy. However, if you graduate from a 200-hour or even a 500-hour yoga teacher training class, you are not really qualified to teach yoga therapy, are you? Well, uh, it's true. You know, what's so hard is, uh, especially in Los Angeles, which is the mecca of yoga, everybody's trying to get a credential, trying to be something, do something. You know, so different people you know, claim they're yoga therapists when they're not. And so what it all boils down to, in my opinion, is where you got your training and from whom. So uh, right now the Yoga Therapy Rx program is the only school at this time that has the yoga therapy course associated with the university. And um, 
They also have a master's program there. Now, there's a University of Maryland that started a master's program in yoga therapy. Um, and uh, But the, the yoga at uh, Loyola Marymount University is with a major university. And their new master's program is like, you know, the first one in the country. So it, I think it's worth it to travel to where you can get your best credentials. And that's at, uh, you know, the Yoga Therapy Rx at... at um, my old Marymount University, and I'm a little biased because I'm the mom. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a little bit. Now, I'm going to say, though, that, okay, so what is it that you would learn in a yoga therapy course that you don't learn in your typical teacher training class? Uh -huh. What is the additional that you get? Well, everybody has their different, you know, things, but um, we feel that the, it's really important that they have a base in anatomy uh, for yoga, not just anatomy course, but anatomy for yoga. And um, we have Dr. Eden Goldman, who's a fantastic uh, doctor and teacher. And so people need to know, you know, that most of the people that come to you in the beginning are for muscular skeletal problems. And, you know, as you learn from Arvind, you know, yoga is much more than just the physical, but when it comes to People coming for problems, yoga therapy, number one thing is the back. Mm -hmm. So you need to know something about the anatomy, the physiology, the, the kinesiology. Uh, and you also need to learn to kn know what not to do. There's a wonderful Sanskrit word called V-yoga, V-I-Y-O-G-A, which means to move away from. So one of the first things I teach people is what not to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so yoga therapy is not for acute pain. That's what we have physical therapists for. Mm -hmm. So yoga therapy is when you have a chronic problem that doesn't go away. You know, it just keeps coming back. Or you're, after you've done your um, physical therapy and a rehab, before you get ready to go into a class, you use the yoga therapy for the on-ramp to the freeway. You know, there's all those uh, kinds and ways to do it. Then in our level two, we take the other systems of the body, digestive system, nervous system, reproductive system, all those things. And I believe that before you get any credentials for yoga therapy, you should at least have those two courses. Mm -hmm. So those are both a year long. And uh, then level three is what you call a shadow clinic. And I followed the example of other uh, institutions like acupuncture, chiropractic, where at first somebody else is doing it and you watch. And then we have a proud to say a brand new level four, which you'll be seeing a nice story in uh, LA Yoga and Ayurveda. Uh, these are the first ever yoga therapy interns in a medical clinic. Hmm. So right here in, in LA, the Venice Family Clinic, specifically the Sims Mann Venice Family Clinic, has one of the first ever integrative medicine programs with the yoga therapist in it. And so the people come in there, and uh, so I, I did a pilot study first, and I've never had anything more rewarding in my whole life than working at that clinic because these people are so appreciative and they wouldn't ever get these kind of services uh, on their own. So what are the common illnesses that uh, patients present with and how has yoga helped them? Well, again, the most common thing people come to yoga for is muscular skeletal problems. So my back, my knees, my hips, you know, my neck, all those kind of things. Then uh, not far from there you have people who have respiratory allergies, all that interesting Blue Shield, Blue Cross, number one thing that people go for is something to do with the respiratory system, common cold, allergies, all those kinds of things. And yoga has some great tools for that. Really? Uh-huh. And then you have people with digestive orders, irritable bowel syndrome, you know, constipation. Constipation is usually an easy one. Um, so it's um, the tools of yoga are pretty phenomenal for digestive problems. And then you've got people with, uh, you know, nervous system, chronic headaches, migraines, all those kind of things. Now, they, I don't know anybody who can fix a chronic migraine without, you know, medicating you, but... Certainly the tension headaches that people get, um, very, very, very effective 
Um, and then you have the whole thing about yoga and pregnancy. You have uh, yoga for things like hot flashes, menopause, um, dysmenorrhea, uh, uh, fibroids, all those uh, female things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really fascinating to watch the clinics that we have. You know, they they come in and, um, you know, we have one of our senior teachers there and everybody gets to, you know, participate in this. And... Um, so it's a very rewarding type of thing, and also right now yoga is so popular that, you know, yoga therapy is the next new wave. I, I, I think the other new wave, and, and we can talk about it later or whatever you want to talk about it, is yoga for people in midlife and beyond. Uh, why don't we just do that right now? All right. So the other program I started at Loyola Marymount is called Prime of Life Yoga, and um, what I noticed because I went to India many times. If you look at BKS Iyengar, if you look at Patabi Joyce, they learned when they were 16 years old. So Patabi Joyce has never changed that format that he learned. Ashtanga Yoga is an excellent system, but it's mainly for the young and restless, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So you go to Ashtanga workshop, you don't see too many 50-year-olds there. Um, it's for when you're young, and it's just like, so Desikachar, my teacher, uh, told me that yoga should be for three stages of life. And this he got from his father, Krishnamacharya. The first stage, uh, shikshana, is when you're young and restless, you know, when you're training for the Olympics, when you're, you know, trying to achieve all you can. And then rakshana is when you reach this midlife, and in America it's something like 40. Because I mentioned you, you look at the life of a professional athlete, they can't do the things they used to after about age 38, mm -hmm. 40, like that. So from that time, and, and the misnomers, not just baby boomers, it's 40-something to 70-something is this group, like 100 million people that are by far the most underserved in yoga. It goes from, you know, flow yoga to chair yoga. There's no... In between, so I'm really making it a passion and, and something I really want to uh, take on the road, which I am doing, uh, to spread the word that this largest segment of our population is the most underserved. And I think it's just a matter of putting a nice bow on it, uh, letting people know it's okay. And the other big winner for this will be guys, because men. You look at the the yoga courses; they're like. You know, mainly they're like 85% women. And the main reason for that is that men do not like to look bad in front of women. <laughs> That's a fact. That you know, and they go in there and then they're doing uh, all these, you know, you know, put your leg behind your head type of things. And the guys can't do it. So they sort of, um, they, they, you know, they don't come to class. So here's a place. Prime of Life Yoga, which I teach at Rancho La Puerta in Tecate, Mexico, in the in the springtime, like usually March. There's a hundred people in the classroom. Fifty of them are men, and that's when I knew I really had something with these principles. Well, I was going to say though that you were saying it's it's the little niche between the young ones who can do flow yoga and the older ones who do chair yoga, yeah. and I would say that you know people in that age demographic who are just starting out, if they start out with a flow yoga class, eventually it'll catch up with them, and eventually they'll end up with the aches and pains that you need to treat through yoga therapy. So if they had done time of <laughs> yoga instead, they may be going for a longer period of time and not needing the therapy at all because in a They itself, went to the right class. Right. The prime of yoga, life of yoga, is therapeutic in itself. And these are really um, what I would call the contemporary teachings of Krishna Machari. And most of your audience knows that he is, was the teacher for Iyengar, Bhattabhi Joyce, Indra Devi, his son Deskachar, A.D. Mohan, all these people. And uh, I studied with him. I did a tribute to him in America. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, he said that these principles are mainly a shift towards more of a focus on the breath, uh, uh, a shift away from perfect form into perfect function. So you allow yourself to soften your arms and legs, which is unheard of, you know, when I was taking these courses from other people. 
The other thing is you move in and out of posture slowly with the breath to prepare the joints. Also allows you to go deeper into the stretch. Uh, and then you choose like the more user-friendly postures that people uh, have less injuries from. And uh, then it you know, makes it something that most people can do, and uh, especially men. Mm -hmm. Are you then in classes like this, would you find arm balances and inversions, headstands and, that, and the like, or is that? Not too much. Yeah. It, it's Not too much. Um, when people call me about interviews and ask me what's the category that people have the most injuries, and it's almost always inverted. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what I have found for inversion is very helpful is just the use of the block under your sacrum and just bring your feet up. Uh, into a half shoulder stand or viparita karani or just put them at the wall or just put your hips on the ground, put your feet up on the wall is one of the safer ways to get the benefits. I mean, you can get to five or ten minutes in a hurry mm -hmm. by just doing that. And I have nothing against those other poses if people know how to do it, if they have a good teacher for headstand, shoulder stand, handstand, all those things. But what happens is there's very few places, if you look at it, that do the headstand in a group class. Uh, Shivananda is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the Iyengar classes do, but most of the other people, if you look at it, you wouldn't find it in the regular unless it was a class on inversion or something like that. So people will go, you know, learn how to do the headstand, do it in the class, and then they don't do it for like three months. And they come back and they take it up in the class and they hurt themselves because they haven't stayed with it. Mm. And they, again, these are my opinions. Yeah. Um, and I've been around for a long time. 33 years now, and I've watched yoga grow. I've seen yoga therapy come in, and now I'm really looking forward to seeing this midlife and beyond uh, come in because that'll be the biggest group ever for yoga. Well, I want to say that all of this, all this, uh, all this that you've seen of yoga and taught and learned sort of found its way into the book called Yoga for Dummies. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we have the brand new third edition of Yoga for Dummies just hit the stands in June. And uh, my partner and I, Georg Feuerstein, did the first two, and unfortunately Georg passed away a couple years ago. Um, and he was America's authority on yoga, and especially philosophy. So this next edition that I, I, I basically did the, all the changes on um, has incorporated three new things. One of them is... Um, wall yoga mm -hmm. and partner yoga and restorative yoga and again i've tried to pick the user-friendly stuff you know partner yoga now every seven years somebody comes out with something new that's some form of partner yoga and it gets more and more acrobatic all the time <laughs> contact yoga all these things and it's fun if you're in that uh, young and restless group mm -hmm. but i try to pick the the postures and partner yoga that are really are user-friendly that are fun and that, uh, you know, you won't get injured. Also, the wall, you know, can be your friend. The wall is, you know, one of the original props. And so there's a lot of fun things you can do with the wall. And now, as you know, the restorative yoga is getting bigger and bigger. So just picking out some simple uh, things about restorative yoga that help people relax into poses and uh, enjoy it a lot. Would you say then that the audience of the book, Yoga for Dummies, wouldn't necessarily be dummies, people who do not know anything about yoga? I mean, you know, beginners obviously would help them, right? I mean, it's not over their heads. No. What happens is I always get somebody that sends me a note and says, what do you mean dummies? You know, it's like <laughs> yoga, the dummies series has sold a billion with a B copies of books because anybody who's ever picked up one of the dummies books knows that it's just a very thorough way to explain something. It's, it's hilarious that how many big yoga teachers in L.A. have a copy of Yoga for Dummies hidden away. Nobody could see them when they want to <laughs> look at it. Because, <laughs> I mean, honestly, Gator Kornstein is, is really an authority in the philosophy things about, you know, how many revolutions of the of the uh, 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 Earth to, to goes to the moon and 108 and all, all this kind of stuff. Uh, you won't find anywhere else. And um, also, you know, the Sanskrit word and the common name for, you know, a lot of the postures. 
um, it's a classic book, so it's not for dummies, it's for smarties, because they're <laughs> smart enough to realize that they're going to be able to figure something out in a really good way, and they've got it down. You know, they really do, to, you know, I remember that even Einstein said that if you really know something, you should be able to explain it simply, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what they do, and so it's a treasure, I think. You've sold now something like about oh, 100,000 copies. It's in, uh, you know, 14 languages. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a classic, and I've just been really fortunate over the last 13 years to be a part of the first edition, second edition, and now the third. Yeah, so, so its audience would be everybody from beginner to veteran, from young, young and 20-year-old to chair yoga, 70-year-old. Yeah. It everybody. really has, uh, and it has something for young and restless in there, some, some sequences that I got from uh, my teacher, Desk Guitar, for people who are young for sports, all those things. Uh, so it's quite a comprehensive uh, book. So how do people find the book? Where do they find it? Amazon is a pretty good place. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're running out of bookstores. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, sadly, yes. So uh, Amazon is one of the way places to go, you know, uh, uh, to get it. And uh, another thing I just want to mention, I don't know how much time we have left, but um, how much time do we have? No, I don't know. I'll give you five minutes. Five minutes? Okay. Um, for 11 years, I took people to the island of Kauai. And anybody who's ever been there who's a yogi knows that <clears throat> that's heaven on earth. That's where they made South Pacific, where they made Jurassic Park, King Kong. You know, it's just like, it's an amazing place. <clears throat> so I took groups there for 11 years. And then I, I took a pause for about 10 years because they basically changed the zoning so you couldn't rent out these places on the beach. Uh, and Julia Roberts bought the house we always used. <laughs> oh. So there's a man there who has built this one-in-the-world kind of place. He spent six years buying um, ashrams in southern India and shipping them over piece by piece to make this structure. So every hallway, every door is from a, like a, a temple in southern India. Wow. It's on 20 acres, which is a, an Ayurvedic herb farm. And I decided, since that venue applied, I am going to start again my yoga and health vacation. So, especially for people in prime of life, you know, 40 plus, um, it's a place where you can go and then we have these classes, you know, twice a day. It's September 12th through the 19th. Twice a day yoga classes. We have a world class chef. Um, we have the local Hawaiian entertainers come to our place to to sing for us every night and then we have a lot of great speakers and then we take you know to all the different beaches we take field trips and then we have one night where we go into the we call it dress up night we go into the saint regis uh, hotel and hang out it sounds like <laughs> so it's fun a, it's a fun gig and so i just want everybody to know about it and if one way to really get the feel of it if, if you put in larry payne Kauai, mm -hmm. k-a-u-a-i larry payne Kauai, in youtube there's a video about that place, and it is like one in a million venue. Uh, and it, we're going to have just the greatest time September 12th through the 19th. So before we forget, all the, all the contact, how do people find you, the book, the retreat, and okay. everything? What's the, what are the websites? Uh, you can find all this at samata.com. Like, what's Samata, you? <laughs> samata.com. And Samata actually pronounced samata, is the word that means balance. Uh, and it's a beautiful word that my teacher, Jessica Char, uh, gave me. And uh, so balance in your life, balance everything. Um, and so at that website, you'll see, um, you know, the Yoga for Dummies. You'll see the retreats that we have. You'll see the classes we teach. And uh, also you'll find the training programs at Loyola Marymount University for both Yoga Therapy Rx and Prime of Life Yoga. And the next Yoga Therapy Rx starts in October, and they're accepting invitations or applications now, and they can only take 50 uh -huh. for each class. So people are already, it's June, and they're already applying, so it's pretty nice. And there you go. So LarryPainSamata.com. Find out all about him and what he does and all his, uh, his students. And I think the more yoga therapists we have, honestly, I think uh, 
the better off we are because uh, they'll be the people helping all of us, all of me, <laughs> the people who are aging. We are all aging, and it's getting to the point where, you know what, I can't keep up with these young things anymore. I mean, I'd like to think I can, but they're... Uh, there comes well, a here's the thing. There's know, nothing wrong with it. It's great that so many people are going to yoga and that they can do these things, but when you have the majority of the population not having a place to go, <laughs> it's not good. And like I say, these people still have some wind in their sails, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, you do. And so it's just a matter of going somewhere where you get the benefits of yoga without getting injured and, and so forth. And do you have a direct Also, I want to take a yeah. moment just to, to thank you, Joni. You've been <clears throat> doing this for some time, and you get great people on your show. And, um, you, you know, you're very dedicated, and I've watched your career grow, and I just want to thank you for what you're doing for the yoga community. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. And, you know, it, I learn a lot doing this, too, so I'm kind of doing this in a way selfishly, too, because I want to reach out to all the people who have all the answers to all my questions, and I figure uh -huh. that if they can answer my question, that answered somebody else's question. Yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Larry. It's okay. good talking to thank you. Thank you very much, and thanks everybody listening. And I want to get a copy of your book and have you sign it. I'll, Thank you very I'll much. You down. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So that was Larry Payne, Prime of Life Yoga, um, Yoga RX, Yoga Everything, Yoga for Dummies. God, he does everything, doesn't he? <laughs> the Association of Yoga Therapists and the symposium that they have, 25 years. My gosh.